Hey everyone, today I'm going to be going through dot point four point one two as a part of the blueprint of life syllabus and it asks us to process information from secondary sources to describe and analyze the relative importance of the work of James Watson, Francis Crick, Rosalind Franklin, Morris Wilkins. And uh, as I've stated here, that Rosalind Franklin is our main concern. She's the person who's done most of the work inside, uh, and she's the main importance in determining the structure of DNA and the impact on the quality of collaboration and communication on their scientific research. Okay, so here I go. I'm just going to go down to my table that I've already drawn. Okay, so just explaining the titles to you, I have importance out of 10, meaning 10 as in the most important, and 0 meaning the least important. I have the scientist's name down here, and the significance towards the uh, structure of DNA discovery. So first off, as I said before, Rosalind Franklin was our most important scientist. She was the most important one, mainly because she was the one who actually came up with the idea of uh, using X-ray crystallography, uh, a method of uh, determining structure of crystals via X-ray, uh, and used X-ray diffraction, which showed that DNA had characteristics of a helix. Now, the main point of this dot point is to show the impact of these uh, scientists and to show the importance of collaboration and communication in, in this discovery. Now, can I stress to you that Rosalind Franklin, she was a female, and at that time, females weren't really recognized for her scientific discoveries. However, they were allowed to go to university, and she did go to university against her father's um, wishes. And she ended up finding out this, uh, she studied a lot about X-ray crystallography. And she thought about it, and she thought, why not use X-ray diffraction to uh, uh, investigate a DNA molecule? And then she ended up figuring out that it had characteristics of a helix. Now, this was the most important discovery, which actually allowed to prove the next thing. So the next thing I'm talking about is the, dis the paper that James Watson and Francis Crick published. Now, there's a reason why I only uh, classify these guys as 5 out of 10 importance, and that's mainly because they didn't actually have a working model or a working um, discovery of DNA at first. They pretty much stole or used... Um, uh, Frank, uh, Rosalind Franklin's work without even uh, acknowledging her until publishing the paper and in fact by using Rosalind Franklin's work they, um, they didn't actually discover that it was a double helix model themselves sure they did actually put out an, uh, a paper which was wrong and they did not actually have any proof that it was a double helix model but both James Watson and Francis Crick, they worked together, and they, they kind of, um, they came up to a, a point where they said, hey, it has to be a double helix structure. They just didn't have enough evidence or proof to show it in a paper. And when I say paper, I mean a scientific paper, something that's um, submitted by scientists to show the discoveries. So what actually happened is that Watson and Crick, after actually creating this paper which was failed, and uh, the model of DNA that they had suspected was failed, um, they were told not to continue research on DNA. However, after Franklin's research um, and her findings, it was passed on to them by someone called Morris Wilkins. Now, Morris Wilkins, he was, he was said to be working with Rosalind Franklin at the time, but his importance is only 3 out of 10, mainly because um, he didn't actually find anything. Sure, he did work with Rosalind Franklin, but the only mentionable thing that you can say about him is that he told Watson and Crick about, uh, about uh, Franklin's discovery and what she had found through X-ray diffraction. Now, J James Watson and Francis Crick, they worked together, and they did end up creating this paper at the end with the help of discoveries from Morris Wilkins. I mean, uh, from the passing on from Morris Wilkins and essentially the discoveries of Rosalind Franklin. So altogether, if you combine it all together, the, the dot point actually asks you to uh, determine the structure of D well, their rel relative importance of the work of in, uh, determining the structure of DNA and the impact of the quality of collaboration and communication of the scientific research. Well, the impact would really be that Morris Wilkins, without his actual um, collaboration and communication with James Watson and Crick, this paper wouldn't have been formed, and even if it was, it would not have been accredited that much. Secondly, the quality of collaboration was quite weak, because 
if you think about it, Morris Wilkins, she didn't actually want to um, release her paper or her findings until she was definite. However, Morris Wilkins went against this, and even though she said not to, he ended up telling Ch Watson and Crick, which did cause problems. But However, at the end, the findings of DNA were attributed to all, all three of these scientists, or four of these scientists, including James Watson, Francis, Francis Crick, Rosalind Franklin, and Morris Wilkins. So you must remember that Rosalind Franklin was the main scientist, and she was really, really uh, a, a big part of actually proving that it had a double helix structure. Thanks for watching.